Good afternoon. It's Friday, March 25th, 2011. I'm Jill Sealand with your Ernerberry Market Report and food service video sponsored by Australian Premium Brands Incorporated. Make sure you stay tuned today for this week's price trends and movers for the food service industry from Ernerberry's HRI Buyer's Guide, as well as an inside look at lamb. First, though, let's check out the egg market. According to the USDA, eggs processed under federal inspection for the week ending March 19th totaled 1,366,019 cases, up 14 percent from last week. Week. Dried production totaled nearly 3 million pounds, which is 35% higher than the same week last year. Total dried production year to date is 23% higher than last year. Now let's check in with our market reporters and see what's going on in the markets. Looking at the box beef market at the exit of the week, we see a bit of negative pressure that was seen earlier in the week for chuck rolls. Now it's made its way over to a few other end cuts. Clods, peeled knuckles, eye rounds, were discounted overnight, with some of the newly listed offering prices falling just slightly below our list of quotations. What you see newsworthy this morning are export levels to Japan of muscle cuts has grown as product continues to ship in spite of the devastation in the north part of the country. Overall movement throughout the boneless beef market this morning has been fairly light. Fresh 50s are rated about steady. Packers asking prices are generally consistent with where they ended the day yesterday. That being said, most processors are taking a wait and see approach to the market as they feel product is more readily available. Demand for the leaner boneless beef is still active. Imported meat markets this morning are mostly steady following significant advances earlier in the week. Most of our quotations, which are reflecting the last significant test of the market, continue to post record high values. Given the recent increase in shipments of product from overseas, Processors had expected to see better availability of imported beef in both the spot and forward markets. However, given the limited availability, it would seem that much of this product might already have been committed to processors. Nonetheless, buyers continue to purchase in a hand-to-mouth fashion as they wait to see what impact current market levels might ultimately have on demand when higher prices work their way down to the consumer. Friday's bids for hogs are expected to range steady to some firmer as a number of packers look to shore up supplies for next week. Friday's hog slaughter is assessed at 395,000 head and Saturday 60,000. Taking a look at pork products, hams and bellies are both rated steady to firmer. Demand for these items is reportedly active. Undertones for the trimmings market are mostly steady. Interest in fresh pork has been thin and is expected to remain that way. Loins are expected to remain near steady and butts trade a bit weaker. Spare ribs are unsettled. Thanks, guys. Now let's check in with our friend Lori at El Gourmet as she prepares a rack of lamb. Good afternoon. I'm Jill Sealand, and I'm here with Lori at El Gourmet, and today we will be preparing lamb. Now, Lori, thank you very much for having us. You're welcome. Thank My you. Pleasure. And we have a couple of racks of lamb here? Yes, racks of lamb. New and Zealand rack of lamb. From New Zealand. Okay, and so what will we be preparing with the lamb? Um, today's a simple dinner entree. It's going to be herb crusted rack of lamb. Um, pretty much it's an easy preparation. doesn't take a whole lot of time. And then once you prepare it, it doesn't take a lot of time to cook. I'm just going to trim some of the uh, excess fat off the top. The rack of lamb is a very lean piece of meat all throughout. There's no fat. It's, it's the, uh, the tenderloin. I'm just going to trim this fat off the top. How would a restaurant go about purchasing? Um, you would get it from your meat purveyor, and since it's New Zealand, they usually sell it by the case, which is like a 20-pound case. So as you're trimming this down, what are some of the other ingredients that we'll be using to prepare this dish today? Um, what I'm going to do is sear this um, just with salt and pepper, and then brush it with Dijon mustard, um, just regular Dijon, and then I made a herb breadcrumb crust. It's got um, just regular breadcrumbs, melted butter, garlic, and fresh rosemary. You mentioned that you are using New Zealand lamb. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between domestic and New Zealand lamb? Um, with the domestic, it's got a slightly bigger eye, which would be this piece of meat here. Bones might be a little thicker and longer. How long will you let these sear? Four minutes, three minutes maybe. That way you'll get a nice sear on there. You're just going to brush the Dijon, and then you're just going to cover it in breadcrumbs. Just pat it on there a little bit. People have a misconception about lamb that it's very gamey. 
Um, the more you cook it, the more well done, the gamier it tastes. You get this stronger aroma from it. This is going to be um, pretty much rare to medium rare. A traditional side dish for lamb is ratatouille. Ratatouille is basically a vegetable stew. So it's a little bit of a Mediterranean flair. Um, I have eggplant, zucchini, yellow squash, tomato, garlic, fresh herbs. Put a little bit of au jus on yeah. top of the ratatouille. When you cut into your rack, you can pretty much follow right along the bone. Okay. Just go straight down, right through. And there you go, there's a rack of lamb. Standing them up to stack. Now let's check in with James Serpico as he takes a look at this week's price trends and movers for the food service industry from Erner Berry's HRI Buyer's Guide. Chicken porterhouse steak is up just under 15%. As the weather warms heading into the barbecue season, Steak cuts such as the porterhouse increase in value. Uh, the cho choice short loin from which the choice porterhouse steak is cut from has increased in value over 27% since the middle of February. Shell egg prices are also advanced here by 8.5% as they have begun their seasonal Easter Passover increase. Traders are positioning their inventories throughout the chain of dis distribution with the demand at the wholesale levels greatly increased from last week. Asking prices are firm. Turkey wings are up about 5%. Uh, these items continue to defy historical standards as supplies are stretched thin as they attempt to satisfy traditional distri distributive and HRI requirements against those necessitated by active grinding needs. Boneless lamb legs trended higher due to a combination of higher priced carcasses and an increase in demand associated with the upcoming Easter holiday. Uh, moving downward, the farm-raised salmon market is unsettled, and many farmed items, both whole fish and filet, are trending lower. Supplies are fully adequate to ample for a de dull demand. The market looks to be adjusting after it hit record high prices two weeks ago. Most items are weak today. Discounting and carried product is reported to be readily available. Thanks, James. And from all of us here at Erner Berry, thank you for viewing. That wraps up Erner Berry's Food Service Report and Market Report, brought to you today by Australian Premium Brands Incorporated. When was the last time your expectations were exceeded? Call Australian Premium Brands today and ask about their beef programs for high choice, choice, select, and no roll equivalent from grain and grass-fed steers. Also ask about their certified organic and Wagyu beef programs. Visit them online at apbbeef.com or give them a call at 877-717-BEEF.